He walks back up to the salesman. He's like, can you co-sign for me? The salesman's like, no. So working at an exotic car dealership, you know, luxury cars, you get an interesting group of people. A lot of people like to stop in, see the cars, you know, I encourage it, I do the same. You know, it's always cool to stop in and see the cars you dream of, your poster cars and stuff like that. So one day we're working and we had this beautiful 991 Turbo S on our showroom floor. It was night blue metallic over like a peanut butter interior, aero kit, just in my opinion, one of the most beautiful Turbo S's I've seen. So this one day this kid shows up about 17, 18 years old, and he comes in, he's like, how much for that? You list him the price, and you know, it's over $200,000, pretty much fully loaded, every option you can get, and you know, salesman's like, this is the price, like, he's like, oh, no issue, I got that, like, just let me run to the bank real quick. And it's, you know, Saturday at five o'clock, and well, he's not coming back, you know, don't know what that was all about, but, you know, maybe he will come back. Maybe he does have a lot of money. We'll see. As you would expect, never came back. About two weeks later, you know, we rearranging the lot and stuff like that. We just put this really nice 944 Turbo right on the front line of our lot. It was this metallic white with a red interior, full red interior 944 Turbo, super clean. Guy who traded in had a bunch of, you know, really unique cars. Uh, they traded in with it, so he was a collector of these, you know, more unique cars to the Porsche lineup that, you know, not everybody goes for. So we had it sitting right up front at our lot, and the same kid, you know, comes back, and he's looking around, and he's like, how much for this one? At the time, we were asking, I think, you know, a little over 20 for it. Low mileage, perfect Carfax, fully maintenance, and we told him the price, he's like, oh, dude, this is great. Like, I love, I've always wanted a Porsche. This is the one. So now he's going from this, you know, really expensive 991 Turbo to a 944 Turbo. Both awesome cars, but very big price range difference, about $200,000. So he's like, all right, like, if you want, we can go into the finance office and we'll, you know, start talking numbers. He's like, all right, great, let's do this. So he comes in and they're sitting down. They're like, all right, well, you know, this is a old car can't really get you know not many banks are going to finance this so he's like well i don't have the cash for it I'm like all right well let's see what we can do let's start reaching out to some banks and we start reaching out and you know we pull his credit score no credit score he's never had a credit card never had a loan nothing so we tell him like listen like we can't get you approved you have you know a thousand dollars to put down on a twenty thousand dollar car with no credit history and he's like, all right, well, what can I do? I'm like, well, let's try maybe seeing if you have a co-signer for the car. That'd be a great way to try to get you into it. Maybe like a relative or somebody who can co-sign for it. And you kind of see, he didn't really know what that meant. So he goes out and he goes back to his Jeep up front and he's sitting in there and you see him, he starts picking up the phone, pick up the phone. And you can tell he's starting to get like angry and gets out of the car. He walks back up to the salesman. He's like, can you co-sign for me? The salesman's like, no, like I, I don't know you. I, I, I don't want to be responsible for, you know, having this on my name. Like I can't co-sign for you. And then he goes to the finance manager and asks, and then he goes and he starts running around the lot and he's asking managers, salesmen, porters, technicians. I'm just at my desk. I would, you know, go and check in and you would see him just, you know, going through the lot and you know, seeing who he can ask, and he came up and asked me at one point, and I'm like, I'm sorry, dude, but no. And what's funny is one of the uh, lot porters walked out to the car, and he wanted to go adjust a little bit because we want to make sure our lines were even. And he gets in, and the kid runs out. He's like, hey, do you just buy this? He's like, no, I'm, I am I just work here. Like, I'm just trying to move it. He's like, oh, can you co-sign for me? He's like, no. Like, and that's, it just kept going and going and going. You know, eventually we're like, you, you need to stop. Like, you can't just, nobody here knows you. Like, you, nobody's going to co-sign for you. Like, 
please just be responsible and like understand that you know we can't have the responsibility of having our name on this title for you so obviously you know this deal isn't going to happen you know we're not going to just you know let some random person sign off on this car you know that was not our intention at any time and nor did we ever go out and say you can just grab a random person and you know get a signature uh, our goal is to try to get you know maybe somebody like a parent a relative or somebody who you use for a cosign like a lot of people do in their first situation of buying their first car on a loan uh, so we were in no no way trying to get it, him to just you know grab somebody get a signature just to move a unit it was probably the strangest thing i've ever seen at the dealership you don't I don't think the kid understood what a cosign meant. I think he just meant like get a signature and you're good to go. After that, he goes back outside and he goes into the middle of the street and he's asking these random people driving by in the road if they can cosign for him. And obviously everybody's saying no. So he comes back and he walks around the lot a little bit more and he goes out to the street and he talks to another person on the street. And apparently he got a cigarette from them. Goes out, he starts like smoking the cigarette, he's getting all angry and stuff like that, and throws it out, and he goes back into his Jeep, and his girlfriend's in there. He goes in, talks to his girlfriend, and you see like this yelling and getting mad at each other, and his girlfriend gets out of the Jeep, walks to the back, and pulls out two suitcases, and starts walking down the road. This guy starts coming back, and he's asking more people to co-sign for him, and eventually we're like, you need to leave. Like, this is getting too intense. Like, you need to stop, like, harassing people over this. Like, this it's going too far. You need to go. His girlfriend's nowhere to be seen. Don't know where if they were going on a trip or something, but the fact that he was just here two weeks ago, and now she's pulling out luggage and walking down the street. So now this guy has to go find his girlfriend. So he runs off, and he's running, like, up and down the street looking for his girlfriend. And eventually she ends up walking back and gets back into the Jeep. And he's still looking... Eventually, he gives up and he goes back to the Jeep and is like surprised to see her in there, turns on the car, leaves, and we never saw him again. Carly offers more assistance and functionality than standard OBD scanners. It's really a workshop level tool that gives you diagnostic capability to figure out what your car is trying to tell you. But beyond that, particularly for BMWs and Volkswagen products, Carly gives you the ability to code things into your car to customize it to your liking. If you went to a shop or a dealership, each of these codes might cost $50 or more. But with Carly, you can code unlimited things into compatible cars with their license. So check out the link in the description below, use VinWiki for a discount, and unlock your car's potential. You can also check used cars as you buy them for odometer discrepancies and mechanical issues. Carly is the perfect investment for anyone who cares about their cars.